Welcome back for part 10 here of Gray Hack. I'm going to do a little something here before we get started. Um, digging around in the database again here. Uh, again, this is for single player. Uh, and found the uh, player table here. And we have uh, some parameters associated with our player. So it's got uh, the ID of our computer, a player ID, some kind of hash value. Uh, info map X, Y, and end map. And I did notice that there's a, a map table here. And if we go to 97, um, oh wait, it's not this one. It's, um, uh, uh, crap. I forgot which one it is now. Um, computer 97. Um, it's got love shack, which is R our computer on it. So that must correlate to that. Um, the X and Y, I mean, they appear to be coordinates, but I don't know. I don't know how they play in the, the game at all. Um, Cause you know, there's not like a map or anything that I've been able to see. Maybe there is. Um, then we have our mails. That's my uh, player's mail. I'm revealing my very secure password. We can see that uh, ink password here. It does just hash the passwords. Oh, and by the way, there is the password tables too. There's passwords, um, which this must be what is searched when we're doing a, um, let's check it out. Oh, no, it's not in this list. It must be in the other list then. Uh, but when we're doing a, a decryption or a, dis sorry, decipher, that's what they call it. Decipher. It must search one of these tables in order to do that. Cause it's not using a password list or anything. There it is. So OS passwords is where it stores those. Anyway, uh, what else we got? Um, storage. This is all of the. Uh, this is all. Of the, so this is the Wi-Fi, um, and there's the uh, Wi-Fi network we're currently connected to. And there's also a list, by the way, of of all the Wi-Fi networks with their. Um, with their passwords in here. It's in here somewhere. I, I've been poking around a little bit here and there. Um, it doesn't have, yes, it's got all of our equipment here. So, so storage is, is the, uh, the hardware we have. There's a game over, uh, here we are. Yeah. Game over entry, um, which is zero right now. There's also a nickname, which I don't have. I'm guessing that's a multiplayer thing, which, um, a little bit, I mean, the fact that there's a nickname that I believe is related to multiplayer and it's in this local database is a little bit disconcerting because that means that these, these, I mean, just simply editing the database might be um, a multiplayer hack too, which if it is, uh, I'm very sorry, and it shouldn't be, um, um, which I will, I will say at this point, I mean, if I have accidentally revealed something, I am sorry. And, um, if the developers do see this and you do want some tips on how you can secure this to prevent people from simply accessing the database and editing these values, um, reach out to me and I, I'd be happy to, to share some, some thoughts with you on that one. Um, because the only reason we're, we're able to do this at all is because the, the database is sitting here on this computer and it's completely unsecured. It's it's just a SQLite database. Um, the most that we have is some security through obscurity with uh, with using hash values, but that's it. Anyway, the last entry in the players table is our current missions, and this is our current mission because we were looking for the credentials for a user named Ross Mondo. Uh, we have a type mission, which I don't know what that is exactly, but I'm guessing that it's the type that's like user creds. Um, and there's probably a different type number for the get file and the change academic or police records or something. We have a target computer ID because there is a table in here somewhere. Uh, that So here's the computers and uh, here we have the ID right there. Um, so all of the computers that are generated are kept in, the, in this table. And that will correspond to that, which means that I, I like, for example, I could take this ID, and go to that table there, and filter down to this ID. It's probably going to be the last one. Yeah, it's the it's the first one in the list, uh, because if we look at the computers table, the last one is my computer, and of course that's going to be the first one that's generated in my single player instance because it 
can't the game can't begin until I have a computer. And then the last one, so it's just reverse ordinal numbers. So the last one is this one right here. Um, so I could take this, right? And this is the router that I was currently sitting on. Um, it's got an is rented and ID and everything. Uh, we also have, as you can see here, names um, and uh, telephone numbers. Uh, this is the uh, probably the who is information. Maxstat, Intelligentsia. Oh, this is, oh no, this is maybe uh, also information related to like statistics for the difficulty level of the admin. So this Fui, fu, fu, oi, Fui, Ker, Fui, whatever, um, is an admin, right? There's their user mail and there's their password, right? Um, let's see what else. Maybe, maybe we can find Ross Mondo on here as well. I don't, don't know. I haven't actually checked yet. Um, it's got hair. This is all for some of the employee database, I'm, I'm betting. Um, what we're looking for. So there are other employees here. So yeah, we'll find Ross Mundo in here if we can spy him real quick. Um, let me just keep going. Be persistent. Don't, don't let the ADD kick in and just start flipping around. Focus, focus. We're looking for Ross Mundo. Ross Mundo. Where are you, Ross Mundo? Here's the router password. Let me uh, fortify this a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay. Um, can I control F this? Ross. Let's just search for, you know, match exact case. Let's just wrap around. Nope. Nope. Ah. Uh. Pardon my notes from hack time there. Okay, he's not in the list. Um, and the reason he's not in the list is because this is the user account list for the uh, router. Not the target machine. We haven't actually reached to the target machine yet. Um, let's go back real quick because I want to grab the name Ross Mondo. The user Ross Mondo does appear in two machines, though. Um, this one. Ross Mondo. Um, Rosmondo, Telefono, Tabajo, Rario, Plain Password, Chicky. Let's search the other one here and see if that's the same password. Um, indeed it does seem to be. So that's probably our answer. I'm going to give it a try. In any event, um, I also want to try, um, I don't want to edit my, I, I, I was, I was looking around here in the players table to see if I can edit my reputation and level. Um, and I wasn't really able to find, I didn't look too hard to be fair. Um, uh, but I wasn't really able to find anything related specifically to that. Um, see, here's the mail that we have in our mailbox right now too. Um, which I probably just missed it. Um, it's probably here somewhere. I can't see why it wouldn't be because everything else is. Um, but uh, I also figured, you know, if we can't edit it directly, then we'll just change these attributes for the mission. Um, and that will, when we complete the mission, give us tons of reputation. So this reputation level here is the level of the mission. Uh, which was a reputation required zero. Um, we, I think if we, there's a chance if we change that, then the amount of experience that we get for completing it um, will increase. 
I also have a karma flag here. I'm already pretty much at zero karma. Um, but I also noticed that this is a one. And I've, I have not taken a positive karma job yet because I don't have the reputation level to do so. So I'm betting that if we were to change this, uh, maybe the type mission... I, I still think the type mission relates to the kind of mission it is. This makes sense with the name. Um, uh, but I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, yeah, I think if we edit these values, we can probably um, significantly change the um, amount of experience points that we receive. But we're we're all right. it occurs to me that we're already cheating pretty pretty much uh, as we're already we already got a cheat here. Uh, let's not let's not overkill, uh, and instead let's start the game up and see if we were able to pull the correct password out of the database. And if so, then we're officially on super easy mode here. Um, from here on out, I'm going to move the database over to another screen while Greyhack is starting up. Loading home. Oh, God, we got another crash already. It's been doing that lately. It might be related to my messing around in the database. It shouldn't be because I haven't actually made any changes to the database since I edited my money all them weeks ago, days ago. Um, but also, it could be a number of things. I always have so many different things running on my machine for various different things and um, and all that, so... And uh, this is part 10 of Greyhack, and uh, I think this might be my last single-player part. I'm going to come back um, after the wipe for some multiplayer just to check it out. And I'll probably do a couple of parts on that to see the progression of the world as it begins to refill with um, uh, the uh, player-created content. Um but I have, uh, my, my summer classes are concluding this week, and now I have, uh, I've been preparing for fall for the last couple of months, but now I need to make sure that everything is set up in our learning management system for the fall, and I have, uh, I'm always on copious overload um, at my university. I'm the only professor who teaches the cybersecurity courses at the moment. Hopefully we'll get some more faculty soon, but that means that uh, I have to support the whole the whole program, which means in the fall, um, I get to do the uh, freshman courses. So I've got intro to information assurance. I get to teach the uh, upper level classes as well. So I've got two of those. And then I also support our uh, graduate cybersecurity program, which is an online program. And I have two classes for that next fall as well. So um, um, wait, I'm forgetting one. Two, three, crap, am I forgetting a class? Now I'm all paranoid because it's like, oh crap, have I not been prepping a class? One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, five, okay. <laughs> all right, as you can see, I did sort out um, our uh, UI issue. I did still leave it as big as I could. Um, and still be able to, to reach all of the important buttons, which is at 105%. I can do 110, but that's really pushing it. But hopefully this is a little bit easier for people to see at home. Um, speaking of which, um, uh, speaking of people at home, um, normally when I'm, uh, I'm teaching, I teach, I mean, over the pandemic, of course, online teaching was, was a requirement. And I, I've always, I've been an online student and I've been an online teacher. And uh, while a lot of my contemporaries um, in academia, just professors in general, not at my university, um, there seems to be an aversion uh, to teaching online, which, you know, I think it comes down to one of those things where if you've done something a certain way for years, the thought of change and having to, to you know, do things differently is a bit scary. Um, or even, uh, you know, a little bit annoying because uh, all this crap you have to learn again. Um, but I don't have that aversion. Um, and, uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is that if there's any interest, if anyone would like to see, uh, me post my, uh, lectures for these classes this fall to YouTube, I can't obviously share 
student information because of FERPA concerns, and I obviously am not going to share access to our learning management system. But I, uh, I may be willing to record. I, I have previously recorded lectures, and oh, what's there's a message in the corner. I have previously posted lectures, generally using Zoom to our learning management system, but there's nothing preventing me from posting them to YouTube as long as it doesn't contain any sensitive information. Oh, that's the version. I didn't even see that it was there. Well, that's my version then. I'm, I am on. I am on an alpha build. So there was a, there was another uh, nightly build. Um, eight dot four 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 zero alpha. So I'm a couple versions back. Not many versions back. The the fact. So uh, when I found out that uh, that loading home is one developer one developer and honest to god there are patches every couple of days it's just amazing like the fact that this is apparently a labor of love for one person is incredible and um it all of the the little idiosyncrasies with the game all of the little uh oh this isn't quite working this isn't quite working um or this is a struggle this is a struggle to be honest with you, so much more understandable and so much more forgivable knowing that it's just one person um, who's fixing all of these bugs, adding new content to the game. It's amazing. Uh, honestly, absolutely incredible. Um, oh, right. Yeah, we were going to check and see. Okay, so I'm not even going to bother uh, loading anything up. I'm just going to... Ross Mondo. Chicky. Let's see if it works. So that's not, well, that's, maybe it was the, no, okay, so it's not chicky. All right. Okay, which is weird, because that password appeared twice in the database on two different machines, and it was the same password. And yet. Um, and you know what? Uh, oh, oh, that's another thing I wanted to show you guys. Speaking of um, amazing things that the game does, or that the developer does, there's a web pages table in the database, and uh, there's, the, there's the actual uh, web docs. HTML, CSS, it's all all right here. You can you can see all of it. And there's um, sites on here that we haven't, as far as I can recall, been to yet. I don't remember ever going to Operkashing House Hollywood. Um, although some many of these do look familiar, so maybe these are only the ones I've visited. But here we have the IP and all of that kind of stuff for all all of those web pages too. It's just it's just it's just great. Uh, passwords. Oh, here's a uh, buoy. Um, I bet if we, I bet if we look here, we'll, we'll see it. Ross. Well, yeah, Chicky. I wonder if there's some other check, um, for the, the quest that's like to prevent us from just searching the database to get the information out of it. Um, if there's just like a check, like that, did we actually reveal it? I don't, I don't think that's the case. Let's try, <laughs> let's try something else though. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. I'm going to need that. Let's grab the email address. Let's just try fishing it off of them. Um, login issues. Nope. Uh, Where's the one that's asking for password? I know it was you. This may interest you. Do we not have one? It just requests a password. Mm -mm.
Uh, as soon as possible with your workstation. Hello, I'm name. I don't know. No, it doesn't seem like there is. Oh, here we go. Give me your password to solve it. Um, I am the administrator. Here, let's let's actually grab it. Eh? Um. Oh crap! I'm gonna have to go back. Rosmundo. Um, oh, it's not Hui like I thought it would be. It's Camille. Okay. Uh, totally different. Not, not even close to Chicky. So my idea that, oh, maybe there's some kind of like flag that says yes you've actually done it or not um customer satisfied with the job all right i was at 975 yep it's 200 per 200 per successful completion hold on my phone in my pocket is bothering me okay um and I'm still at level one until, okay, so yeah, I got to do three more, four more. Uh, if it's 200 per, uh, yeah, four more. Damn, that's a lot. Um, I wonder if, can't do two, credentials needed. So the credentials needed are all rep level one, which in the database was at level all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab actually two jobs here. I'm going to grab another credentials needed because those are super easy, generally. Um, and I'm also going to grab a different level job. Um, here's the level zero credentials needed. Okay, and then I'm going to check back in the database and see... Um, I have, uh, missions, target user. Yes, there are two missions in the database now. Um, let's go to my email. One of them is looking for Thibua, and then that's the first one I grabbed, and the second one is looking for Corthold. The one for Thibia says type mission one. Okay, so that's the same. I'm guessing I'm correct in my assumption that that is indeed... Uh, the credentials mission indicator. Um, the first one I grabbed it was a level one, and it does say reputation one. This one says reputation zero. They both have karma zero. So now that I have, I, I I'm really sketchy about editing these values because if it's going to cause a problem, well, number one, if it's going to cause a problem. If anything's going to cause a problem, it'll probably be that. Uh, but number two, I'll also need to reboot in order to reload the database. And I'm also not sure if I change it to a repu... I, if I, my, my assumption is that if I change the reputation level to a higher level, it's worth more experience points. But I obviously can't obtain a mission outside of my reputation limit. So if I change this value, either it will be fine because I've already gotten the mission and then I'll get tons of XP for the job. Or it will say, hey, how did you end up with this mission? You don't have the reputation level to finish it. Well, you know what? What the fuck? Let's, let's fucking do it. Um, I'm going to change just the second job that was at reputation level zero for uh, Corthold. I'm going to change that to a 10. And we're going to write that change. 
And then we're going to need to reboot. Oh, and for um, anyone who noticed, anyone who noticed in my shopping spree episode where I went and got myself some new equipment, you noticed that the uh, motherboard I ended up with um, cannot handle the amount of RAM I purchased. You are absolutely correct. The only reason I installed all the modules, including those that can't even be used, is because of the bug I discovered with uh, duplicating hardware. And, uh... Okay, all seems well. Everything is up. Um, because I, uh, I, uh, the bug I got duplicating hardware, and it was there. So I just threw it in there. Alright, the one for Corthold is the one that I changed. And let's double check here. I'm at 1175. This should be worth 200 so it, if I complete this, if it didn't do anything, I'll be at 1375 If it did do something, then God knows what I'll be at. Corthold. Corthold, the regulator. Okay, let us begin. That's, I meant... Do this. Uh, we got FTP. We got SMTP. Um, and we're aiming for two, so we really want uh, FTP, the first one. What do I have here for FTP? I mean, or we could do SMTP. Um, Vite Pro. can't remember if that is a, I think that's a guest access one uh, 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 um, yes guest non root user oops Um, I guess we could try that. I don't know. I've never had a lot of luck with it. Oh, it worked. Cortold, we did it. We did it. We did it, boys. And the answer is boys. All right, let's now see. Where did my... I keep closing things. All right, let's see what we get. Customer satisfied with the job. Okay, well, what do we get? Okay, so it, it didn't change the value of the job. We just got standard 200 uh, XP for it. So I'm not mad at it. I, it was it was a, it was a try. We gave it a try. Um, so we're done with that. And. No, why did you do oh this is another thing. The freaking oh. It's like walking in sand. It's like when you're having a dream and you realize that suddenly you can your legs don't move. It's terrible. Uh, booyah. Uh C D dot dot and map. No open ports. Uh, let's use the secret sauce from Ghost 01. See, whenever it tells me that there's no open ports, I say to myself, boy, there's a bunch of things that we could do here to try and uh, find a way in. And then I realize that I've just been essentially given God mode by a uh, viewer. So... <laughs> 
I'm just like, let's just do it. Okay. Um... Uh, let's see, should we do as we did, um, and, uh, get root on the router and then move over? Does that seem, uh, does that seem reasonable? I haven't, you know, I haven't actually tried any of these. Hmm. Oh, I thought that that was, uh, a list of other options. Um, I don't know what that signifies then. <laughs> oh, oh, well, anyway, it was worth poking at. Anyway, um, so we have, uh, get, let's not, let's not do the router. I mean, it's always my impulse to, if we have root access anywhere on a network, that would be where you'd normally go because that gives you more options. Um, but, uh, I, I want to try and see where these other ones drop us. Cause I feel like it would be uh, nice if the script actually had the IP, uh, next to it so that we knew what we were hitting, but, um, this is number one and we're aiming for number two. Yeah, we're aiming for number two. Um, so let's actually exit out of this. Let's rerun that. Um, and I want to try the other ones and see if we can get a guest shell right on, uh, right on the uh, box we're looking for. Uh, and then we'll just elevate. I shouldn't say that you always go for the highest privs. Um, generally you do. Not always. I guess it really kind of depends on your objectives and the network and defenses that you're facing, so. That's number one again. These all go to, are these all just, uh, or is the, the router the only, um, the only target we can reach? Probably. Probably is. Um, well, if that's uh, the case, then obviously we're going to want root access if we can get it. Um, do I have nmap here? No. I'm going to reduce this terminal here. Do 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 do. Not O, oh, 16802. Oh, okay, once again, we just have the employees database open. Um, okay, root is the only user we have on here. Okay. <sighs> so weird. God damn it. P typing around a microphone here. Um, what was it again? Log viewer not on here? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, 
file explorer is all that's on here. Um, okay. Well, all right. So we already know what we're supposed to do in this case. Um, we can run scan land. We can pivot to another machine. Uh, we can open the router config if we can get on another machine with a browser uh, and do all that. Um, but can also just, um, look and the database. Let's try what I see here. This is the password I see in the database. That's not it. I don't know what that, that deal is there. Uh, it's got a, it's got a password here. I can see it in plain text. That's fine. We'll just, uh, fish it from her. Oh, we're going to need the, uh, exits. Who is seven, four, two, one, four, eight, two, forty five. Yeah, that's vastly different, once again, from what I'm seeing in the database. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Let me uh, actually search for that password on here. Yeah, it's not. It's not in there. Um, if I do a search in the computer table, I do get a result when that, with that password. Um, text not found though. Where is that coming from? Um, it is. So the computer table, if I search for that password, it does come back, uh, with one result, which is a PC named Iana Boonerdu which has a separate public IP. Um, it's got the root user, root password. Here, let me show you. This is what came up when I searched for uh, the password that I got. And you can see here, it does contain the user's name. What I searched for uh, was user thib. Uh, her, that's where I got Curso from. But in the computer table, I bet if I were to search Thib, uh, I'd probably get... There's her real password. Um, she's not... This is the router. This is the router I was on that I had root access on. Oh, no. <laughs> Find what are you, why are you not finding? Whatever. Um so yeah, it is it is in there. It is in there. The customer satisfied with the job is gonna be like, oh shit, that it's that, that not right either? Because then I'm really fucked. Alright. Another job. Another job. We need two more to get to level two, and then we can try a new a new job. Uh, and we can try some legit jobs and raise our karma up. All right. Police record. Find an elite remote file. Can't do that one. Police record. Credential. We can do another credentials needed. That will seem to be pretty easy, especially since we're cheating on them. So we'll grab that one. And we will grab this one. And that will be all we need to reach level two. Okay. Now, I don't think that the database will actually update with those values until we actually touch them. I think. Um, I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go over here. We're looking for the user, the password for Surma. Holy shit. There are so many. Oh my god. There are so many. 
No, that's players. I don't want players. I want passwords. Surma. All right, this is what I have for Surma right now. I don't think that that's right because it hasn't been so far, but let's just throw it in there. Try it. Yeah, okay, so nope, it's not, not it. So let's go back to the DB. Computers. Holy shit. Um... Why can't I search? I mean, there's this. This is the router. Okay, let's um. Fisher. Fisher Price. Oh, I didn't get the. Sound. Okay, done. Next, Bakam. And we know that that's not right. I'm not sure why it's got a password in there that's not right. I don't know if the password's changed. They probably do now that I think of it. Alright, drop that in there. Grab this, grab that. Who is that there? Fish. Fish, fash, fush. Just like that, we are at level two, or at least we should be. Yep, reputation level two with 100 XP to spare. Now we can try a different job. How long have I been recording here? 43 minutes, that's okay. Uh, now we can do legit jobs because we're level two, and we can raise that karma up because my karma is in the shitter. Jorbs. We haven't done any... Uh, Legit jobs here, so. Um, let's see if these are any different. Find evidence that incriminates a suspect is the only job we can do at level two. So let's choose you, Pikachu. There we go. I was wondering if there was an email coming in or not. All right. There are suspicions that a person who is being investigated keeps the evidence of a crime that has been committed on his computer, but we have not managed to enter the public IP. No, not managed to enter. Public IP address is six eight. Let me uh, get rid of all this extra notes. Uh, local IP of. Oh, oddly enough, uh, you can't click and copy uh, the local IP in this email. Normally, you can. Okay. 10.0.11.13. Find any evidence that can incriminate the suspect and attach it to uh, in a response. Okay. So, um, this, uh, no, uh, all right. So, just to take a moment to discuss uh, the verisimilitude here, uh, this is uh, not the way that this normally would go, obviously. Um, there's 
differences in the United States from state to state. There are, of course, federal standards. Um, but in the United States, despite the fact that there are some variances from state to state, uh, there is um, in in this area more than many others some uniformity in the way that the law is applied for search and seizure. And the reason for that is because in the United States, um, the uh, burden um, for search and seizure is actually in our Constitution in the Fourth Amendment, uh, which says very specifically that no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, and they must be issued by an officer of the court. Um, they must describe in particular the person or place to be searched and the items to be seized, uh, and so on. Now, there's some variance because um, as far as state courts go, there is a reputation among uh, court officials, which means a, a magistrate judge in this case, um, for just rubber stamping whatever search warrants an officer will require, but that is normally the process. Some investigating officer um, believes that someone has materials that's related to an investigation. They put that material together, and there's a standard boilerplate form that they fill out. They will attach the uh, a description of the person or place to be searched. They will attach another sheet of paper with the items to be searched and seized. And then they will um, go to a judge uh, who will examine it and make sure that there is indeed probable cause in this case. And then they will approve the search warrant. The uh, investigators then will go to the person, uh, which is to be searched, or the place who the person who owns the place to be searched, uh, will serve the search warrant. The search warrant will contain simply information that this is what we're looking for uh, uh, and we have the right to be here. Um, they will go in then and they will search through only those items and they will retrieve and seize only items which they believe to be connected to the investigation which could hold that information. So what this means is that if the search warrant, if they're looking for a stolen TV and the search warrant says, we are looking for a stolen television set, a 60 inch television set, uh, the police are not allowed to go through your medicine cabinet because a 60 inch TV could not possibly be in a medicine cabinet. They're not allowed to go crawling around in your vents. A 60 inch TV could not possibly be in your vents. And that's why uh, when a search warrant is requested, uh, oftentimes police will do something that's a little bit tricky and they'll put as, uh, uh, they'll, they'll itemize the items to be searched in a way that allows them to search as many things as possible. So they'll say, uh, we are looking for a stolen TV and remote control that goes with the TV, which gives them the right to search anywhere. There might be a 60 inch TV and or the remote control, which obviously gives them the right to search in a lot of different places. Another thing here uh, is that um, the warrant must be served. Um, there is uh, in some jurisdictions, something that's known as a no knock warrant. Generally speaking, the uh, search warrants must be served during the day, during nor normal business hours, if possible. But there are some jurisdictions in the United States where that uh, isn't the case, where they do issue what are known as no knock warrants, where essentially the police come storming in. And then uh, after they have already begun searching, they serve you the warrant. Uh, the only time that those should be issued is in exigent circumstances where they believe that if you have any advance notice of a search that will be conducted, uh, that evidence for the investigation will be lost or spoiled in a process known as spoliation. Um, so there's that. Now, in this case, uh, we are not. We 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 are not. Oh, um, uh, I should also mention that that doesn't mean uh, when the search occurs that the police are not allowed to take more uh, than. Uh, than the items that they're looking for. Um, and a computer investigation is a perfectly uh, good example of that. So let's say um, that the police have a search warrant and it says that they're looking for tax records. And while searching your home, they go through your file cabinet and they find that you have uh, boxes full of financial data. The police will likely take all of that, uh, whether it is pertinent to their investigation or not. And the reason for that, number one, is because uh, they are under no obligation necessarily to... Um, to uh, um, conduct their search immediately um, if they believe that a container uh, contains in evidence in their investigation they are allowed to seize all of it and sift through it in their own time and then return 
back to you what wasn't relevant to the search. Also, uh, they're allowed to do that because you are allowed to collect evidence that is uh, relevant to essentially metadata, right? Um, whatever evidence uh, is related to what they're looking for that provides context for their evidence is relevant evidence. Meaning that if they're looking for tax records and the box is full of financial records, all of that could likely be relevant because your financial records are part of what informs your taxes and leads to the creation of tax documents. Now, this is uh, true for computer investigations as well. If the police come in, they're not going to sit there and look through every file on your computer for the evidence that they're looking for. They're going to seize your hard drive. They're going to seize it. They're going to image it. And uh, they're going to look through the whole damn thing in their own time for anything that might be relevant because computer systems contain not only the evidence they're looking for, but a ton of tons of metadata that is associated with those files so they're going to take everything um, in this case we do not have a warrant and it's true that um, i mean there's forensic examiners that aren't police um, you know your blood splatter uh, analysts your imaging analysts your all of these people um, aren't necessarily officers they're not law enforcement officers they work with police they're forensic investigators or forensic examiners i should say um, and so, um, you know, when the police serve the search warrant, they're the ones that are serving the search warrant, but they may rely on non-police personnel in order to do that. So it's not unusual at all for somebody with, you know, technical skills, um, to go through an induction process and all that kind of stuff to become a forensic examiner and work with police. But this is not how that's done, right? We, even, even when you're not a member of law enforcement, there are strict controls over, um, paperwork and such because you're still working within the law enforcement and and you need to be careful of people's civil liberties and whatnot so um in this case this is not how this would be done uh we presumably we are working with the police and they just said hey we think that this person has committed a crime hack into their computer and find it for us now when you're a forensic examiner you do a fair amount of hacking you you just do because you have to get past passwords and, and encryption and stuff all the time uh but There's, uh, again, uh, strict protocols as far as all that's concerned. And the police would not hire somebody to just break in um, and steal evidence. And the reason for that is because here in the United States, anyway, um, there's a concept known as the fruit of the poison tree, which means that if evidence was not obtained in a way that is above board and um, protective of uh, individual civil liberties for the people who are involved and so essentially if a violation of the fourth amendment has been found to occur uh, then none of the evidence of that search is admissible in court which means that let's say uh, let's say that um, let's say that the the police serve a search warrant they're looking for a 60 inch tv and so what they do is they go into this person's house and they decide um, to open up somebody's tiny safe. And there's no way that a 60-inch TV could be in that safe, but they force him to open it anyway. And when they do, they find it's loaded to the brim with cocaine. So they arrest him on possession of cocaine, which is a Schedule One substance here in the United States. So it is illegal to possess. Um, he's going to be arrested. Uh, he's going to go to trial. He's probably going to spend a little bit of time in jail while he's awaiting trial. But if he has competent attorneys, they will file a motion to dismiss based upon the fact that the cocaine's search and seizure was not legal. And it wasn't because the search warrant did not allow them to open that safe, which means that they, even though they know that he's got cocaine, they saw it. Even if he admitted to it, he said, yeah, that's, don't worry about that. That's not my stolen TV. That's my cocaine. Um, it will be dismissed. That's the fruit of the poison tree. You cannot admit evidence that was not seized and collected in a way that is valid. Um, so what this would be is even if I find incriminating evidence on this computer, guess what? That's not going to do the police any good anyway. They'll know they have the right guy, but they're not going to be able to use any of the evidence that I find. They just won't. Um, N map, not N amp. SSH, SSH we can do. I think I might even already have some. I probably do already have some SSH uh, vulnerabilities in here somewhere, but 
Fuck if I can remember which ones are which, so... Uh, which, while I'm at it, I might as well. Because apparently Navigator is one of them. What else I got? I know I had Hinks before. I don't think I have it anymore. I think I got rid of it when I was in my crunch for space before I joined the ranks of the rich and famous. Any others? Pitch. Looks like that's about the size of it. Okay. Um, so Navigator will get access to the path sys and print their contents. Uh, some overhead there as far as what we do. Um, non-root user access. Let's do that. Let's use mirror array. Hey, copy, paste, share, put it there, paste word one. Uh, SSH. Uh, uh. Pycon Boons. Oh boy, we got a JPEG here. Oh, I need the image viewer. been a while since we've seen an image on one of these machines i've been, I've been a good long while i forgot that they were there pdf reader new os part one i gotta say uh so uh, my research and my, my specialty i guess you could say is in digital forensics and to, uh, like i've had a lot of fun with gray hack um, I really liked, there's a game called, uh, the USB stick found in the woods, which isn't really, or found in the grass, uh, which isn't really a game as much as it's a forensic challenge. It's not even a very good forensic challenge, but when I saw that on steam and I, I started playing it and I realized it was a forensic challenge, not a game. I was so goddamn excited about it. I would absolutely, I mean, the fact that the, that gray hack has this, um, like the PDFs and the images and stuff like that. If I could find a forensic game with procedurally generated targets, like what gray hack is doing here, but with a little bit more verisimilitude and more of a, um, more of a bent towards, uh, forensics, I would be so ecstatic. Like I, <laughs> the fact that this is in here, I'm really excited about it. Like the PDFs and the images and the being able to do this kind of work. Uh, if I had a game that was like this, but a little bit like turn the forensic knob up to 10, uh, I would be so happy. But honestly, I, I can't, I can't underestimate, uh, uh, I can't, uh, undersell how excited I am, um, at, at seeing this kind of stuff because you never like having a game with procedurally generated computers and scenarios and, and all this kind of stuff you never see it so it's exciting um anyway i don't think that either of those are our evidence uh, there's nothing in downloads nothing in desktop Uh, cat tail. Uh, there's that. I, I don't know if that's changed anything. Like, I don't know if that's password one or if it's a different password for the mail program, but that's fine.
Um, oh, this is my mail program. It's not supposed to run, launch my mail program. If I run an, an exe on a remote machine, it's supposed to run it from that remote machine, remember? It's not, though. Not in this case. Um, no, not browser. Damn it. I'm peeing around a microphone. What? Oh, I went back. All right. I don't see any evidence there either. Uh, we have a decode and an encode. Uh, encode, function password. It's, a. Uh... a Caesar cipher apparently okay um Nothing funky there. New there. F stab. Um, all right, well, not seeing any obvious evidence here. What am I supposed to be looking for? Well, this is why having a search warrant is so important. Even if you work uh, in a support forensic capacity for law enforcement, there are lab intake forms and request forms and stuff that would, uh, there's never any question as to what you're looking for. There's never any question. It's just... Uh, okay. Um, Not a directory? What is it then? Yeah, see, I can't do that in Greyhack. Um, what? It's it's not like it's this is not malicious code. It's a Caesar cipher. For I in range. Zero to pass ling minus one. And that's all it's doing. This isn't exactly evidence of a crime. Unless it's supposed to be the JPEG and the PDF, but those didn't look very malicious to me.
Let's just start grabbing some shit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, one time, my uh, late wife and I went to uh, uh, the, the uh, Caribbean, several islands. And I believe when we were on St. Lucia, uh, there was a tour guide. We went on a, a tour of some exotic plants and, and so on. Um, and throughout the tour, he uh, said multiple times that... Um, when he was in the army, he was an older gentleman, so he was in the army in uh, Vietnam, I think it was. Um, he was a reconnaissance scout. And they always told him, no matter what you do, bring back the evidence. So now every single time I do this in my daily life, I think to myself, bring back the evidence. All right, let's check that config. Encryption enabled false. Message encrypted, connection true. Path, encode, decode. This is... Can't launch program permission denied. Is that what is that what you're telling me I need to do? Like I need to elevate in order to run this decode on this SSHD? I think so. I think that's what they're trying to tell me. Which, if that's the case, then fair enough. I am just fine with that. Um, let's go back. Okay, let's grab our libber. Oh, I'm going to need that file explorer again, aren't I? Bring back the evidence. Type here while attempting to look up load. Oh, what? This is new. I've never run into a problem with this before. Uh, line three. Um, weird. Damn it. there oh i i'm not i'm not guessed um that's why um um that's my problem typically when i run this i'm the guest account which i suppose while i'm here i should probably check these it would be stupid to hide it in a uh, guest account, but... Cryptosporidium! Um, how do you know? It's all version one. Just as I suspected.
I can't even remember if this one gives me root access. Oh. Okay, that that is not uh, that is not a root access granting uh, exploit. All right, search. Uh, oh, I think I already have. No, that was Partic, not Pitco. Um, um, um non root user, non root user. Okay. Terminal kernel module. No, oh, well, no, I. No, no, that's lick b, not ick too. They're gone. To new password user, non root user. Oh. I was just wondering to myself if I can crack his password and log in as him to read his mail. And then I... I guess you can. Well, then let's do that. Uh, we gotta close some of these windows here. Alright, yeah, we gotta... This is getting out of hand here. Close that for now. Close that for now. Close that for now. Okay, and then downloads. Change this. These two. Save that here. CD downloads. Decipher. Okay. Oops. Mail. Login as this. Nothing. Got no mail. Steal his money then. Oh, that's the wrong one. That should be Sydney. Perform transaction amount everything to. I can't remember my own frickin' thing. Excuse me while I pull it out of the database because I can't remember my account number. I guess I should probably keep this handy up here at the top of my thing. Yeah, I stole all his money. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, we're, so yeah, wait, hold on a sec. I was sidetracked. We're still looking for a, a local privilege escal uh, escalation here. Um, uh, what else did we have? Um, um, net.
Nope, nope, non root. Non root. Non root. Root. Uh, we don't have four users. That doesn't look like our Huckleberry. Um, I don't think we've actually done an escalation for the app client yet. Let's try that. Non root. 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 Oh, okay. Well, none of those seem to do the trick. Um, well, which means we've gone through all of them. Um, okay. Oh, this whole time, all I had to do was that. I didn't know I had access to it. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, browser. Back to here. Put that in there. Back here. Do the same thing we just did, only this time with the root. back here um oops um and now i'm root now why did i need to do that um oh right the decipher thing um well actually first since we're here Leave no stone unturned, shall we? Yeah. Uh, ran it. Didn't seem to do anything. Didn't get an error. So. Is that all I needed to do? Can I reply and attach that? And that's all I needed? Is that it? No? Um... Oh.
Really? Damn it. No. Okay. What the fuck? Okay, um, I'm not sure. Um, all right, let's think here for a second. Um, It should have started a web service then, so now if I... <laughs> okay. I need to access then the... Router. Um... <laughs> um... No? Okay. Oh, that's right. I don't have Nmap available right now. That's why. Um, is that our next move, I guess? Seems like that's our next move. Of course, we have a copy of all this. So we could also just open this up on our own machine, run it from our own machine, which of course normally would be a terrible idea because this could potentially contain it. sensitive evidence. But it does present the uh, the absolute uh, path of least resistance. Oh, I just noticed it's actually, is this not the right machine? Is this not the right machine? Because it says 10, 0, 11, 13. Yeah, this isn't even the right machine. Um, okay, let me just bring that browser back then. 2, Um, SSHD was already started type browser. Service is available, so this should be <coughs> um, do we want to use the standard port. Are we already wait, hold on. Yeah. Let's just use port let's use port nine nine nine. Oops. Can't use tab there. And oh, one, 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 three. Okay. Uh, now that's done. Can we actually see it? The change now, if we were to rerun that. Yeah. Yeah, we can. That's cool. Um. OK, 
Okay. Then let's... Oops. Okay. Ought not be. Okay. Hmm. I gotta think for a second now, because I'm getting tossed back and forth here. I mean, honestly, at this point, I guess my next move is to um, actually, let's run a scan LAN. And uh, see where I am, because I only just realized that um the machine i'm on is not actually the target machine which i should have noticed before but i didn't so sue me so let's see where we are and where we're going permission denied the fuck Oh, that's right, I'm root. Ah, stop. All right. So, uh, we are here. We are trying to get to here. Why would the gateway be that? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Well, now that we have started SSHD, um, let's get rid of the browser. So yeah, we're not we're not on the machine that I thought we were on. We're in a, a, a totally different machine. That explains why we weren't able to find any evidence on this machine. Um, so let's um, let's zap that then. Um, Do I? I think I already have mirror ray on here. No. Uh, I can to see. That's not what I'm looking for. So. Uh. Uh. uh put that over here. Okay. This whole time I've been trying to figure out how to do what I needed to do on this machine only to realize that I this is not even the target machine so now I need to basically start the scans all over again okay 
Um, so there's nothing running up on that. Uh, although I did set up port forwarding um, on this machine here. Let's see if I can actually... Yeah, okay, stop. Um, let's actually set up. Okay. And now we can do this. There, right. there, yeah, eighty, eighty, open, but whatever. I just wanted to set up the port forwards because I know that there are some exploits that we're gonna probably end up having to use here. Uh, that require it. So, we'll come back to that in a moment. Alright, me. How long have I been doing this? An hour and a half? I think we're just about done for today. But I do we could just we could just go back to the database and cheat, to be honest with you. But I won't. Uh combi. I think I already have combi in here. Yeah, I do. Do I already have an HTTP folder? I don't. HTTP. Ambi. Oh shit, I should probably make sure that there's not something important I need to be doing right now. Good. Good. Lately I've been doing this thing where it's like, um, keep forgetting about where I need to be and what I need to be doing. I think it's a symptom of, uh, summeritis. Uh, Partick is one of these as well. Um, oh shit. Give that a try. I think that's all of them. I don't see any others. I thought I had Solips before, but I don't see it in here. I thought I had eBasic before too, but I don't see it here either. Okay. Um, terminal here. Let's use, let's try Partic. Require lib not found, okay. Oh, I did have Sylips in there. Um, didn't, nope, don't have the required library. No active user found. Okay, well, we can either do a fish, but this is a router, so. Um, actually, I know that the service isn't running, but I do wonder now that I've opened that port if, uh, if. Um, let's just check, let's just test it. No. That's good. That's what, that's what it's supposed to do. I was just checking. 
poking around at it. All right, then let's go back to the browser. Do we have any others that we could try? Predict? Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind. Oh, we did try running Solips and it didn't work. What was the error we got back on that one? Uh, no active user found. That one requires a user. Yeah, any user logged on the computer. Uh, we don't have a root user logged into the computer. We don't have a user logged into the computer. Okay. So this one's not going to work. Um... Checking the database here. Password. Uh, where is the... Refresh. Okay. It occurs to me. Oh, I'm looking for a shortcut. I should probably just take a break instead. Um, which is okay. Um, cause actually this is going to be my last, my last part here in single player anyway. So, uh, we got a level. We were able to try out some of the legitimate missions, uh, working for the police instead of, uh, as a criminal, uh, to, um, where is it? There it is. Oh. Is this how we're supposed to submit that? I wonder. Uh, anyway. Uh, we didn't try all of the different mission types, but that's okay, because I have a feeling we'll get to them in multiplayer anyway. Um, but uh, I really I really like the the last mission that we did. Um, the, uh, the verisimilitude with having the images and the PDFs, which we have seen before, but I actually forgot exist in the game because we haven't seen them in so long. We've done like 10 missions now. Uh, and I think we saw them on like one of our first ones and then they were gone and they came back But that, those little details, even though it's just a crappy little picture and a, and a, you know, template PDF or whatever. Um, I really, I just really like it. It adds, a, it adds a, a lot to the scenario. Uh, when the computers look a little bit more lived in, you know what I mean? Um, I like the variety of the missions, uh, the challenges. Um, one thing I do notice about the challenges is that they do tend to swing back and forth. Some of the missions are, are very easy. Some of them uh, require a little bit more thought, but I don't have a problem with that. That's not really a bad thing to me. Um, it's more like real life. You kind of don't know what's coming down the pipeline or, or what to do here and there. And plus, you know, a lot of the times I'm finding that when I'm having difficulty with a challenge, like right now I'm kind of stalled a little bit. It's usually because I overlooked something or, uh, I made the wrong assumption or, um, you know, it's just stuff like that, which is good. That's good that it does that because if you push through it, uh, I do a lot of puzzles. I do a lot of investigations. I do a lot. I do a lot of this kind of stuff. If you push through those kinds of things, it makes you a better critical thinker. So it's not a bad thing uh, that the difficulty level swings like that. It's not a bad thing that you're not getting help here and there, uh, everywhere you go. Um, that's good. This is all good things. So this is my last uh, part on the single player experience for Gray Hack. Uh, over the last, God, how many hours do I have in this some bitch right now? Uh, I'm uh, coming up I'm on uh, around 20, let's say 20 to 30 hours I've put on this game. Um, it's going to be somewhere in there. Not a whole lot of time, uh, admittedly. I mean, it's pretty decent because it's like, how much time did I have in HackNet? Uh, HackNet and uh, 19-0, 19-4, sorry. 
Um, so a decent amount of time compared to the other hacking games that I've played. Hacker Simulator, I had like a five-part series on, series on, and I've only played that for four for three hours. Um, Cyber Attack, I only put forty-five minutes into because that game fucking sucked. Um, I play, I put ninety-five minutes in Code Seven somehow. Squally is the is the longest I've had. I have eighty hours in that. That's why that was a twelve-part series. Um, so overall, uh, not a ton of hours into this, but a good amount relative to what I what I generally spend on a game. Um, and overall, um, the single player experience, I, I like it. Uh, on my uh, on my channel, um, in uh, I decided I keep getting questions, you know, from people uh, asking, you know, what are what are some good hacking games. Um, so on my uh, uh, YouTube channel here in the about section, I uh, I put the list up, um, and I have just my top five. Like, what are the the five best uh, hacking games or hacking simulator games or hacking themed games that I've ever played? Number one is still Squally, because Squally is an awesome game for learning assembly and basic exploit principles, and it's fun on top of that. My number two over the course of the 20 to 30 hours that I've played this, is now Greyhack. This is, I mean, in some ways it even exceeds Squally, uh, but Squally beats out Greyhack in terms of my top five, uh, simply because Squally's got a pretty decent fun factor. The game moves at a good clip, uh, and uh, and it's it's really fun. Uh, whereas with Greyhack, uh, it's fun, and then you, it's just like real hacking. It's fun, uh, then it's frustrating, then it's boring, uh, then you, you get angry and then you hate yourself and then you hate the game and then you hate the world and then you figure it out and then you feel awesome and then you want to do it all over again. That's what real penetration testing is like. That's what real security work is like. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, the, over the course of the 20, 30 hours I poured into this game, it's in my top five. As a matter of fact, it's number two, number two with a bullet, um, because Hacknet USB stick found in the grass in 19.4, they round out that list, and I'm not actually that thrilled with Hacknet or 19.4, so hopefully those will be moving down the list as we as we get more decent games. Um, but uh, fantastic, uh, and I definitely would recommend this game. I don't rec I don't recommend using it as like a learning tool if you're interested in cybersecurity and you want to you want to you're like you're, let's say you're 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 working on your CEH certification or something like that uh don't use this game as uh as your your practice or as your uh as your training uh it's not going to get you where you need to be but what it will do is it will take you from 0 to about 20 to 30% of the knowledge that you need but most importantly is it will it is a good trainer for critical thinking this is not it's a hacking simulator and it's a good one but in my ex opinion and experience here playing this game it is primarily a critical thinking trainer and that is awesome because you don't see that very much most games these days are so easy they make it so easy because they want the player to keep playing. They want the player to feel rewarded. The player needs to feel accomplished in order to do that. And so you're spoon-fed answers, and you're told where to go, and you get the big flashing red button, and then you say, hit that button. And then you have some games these days that put the big flashing red button in front of you, and they say, push this button. Push it now or the world's going to end. And then you push the button, and then the game punishes you by saying, you idiot, you pushed the button. Why did you do that? And I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. But uh, uh, I digress. That's not what we're talking about here. Greyhack doesn't do that, and I love that about it. And that is why I do recommend this game. It is a decent hacking simulator. It's got a great uh, community behind it. There's a lot of really smart people playing this game uh, that are putting their own two cents out there. And that is why I will be back in part 11 for multiplayer in a day or two when I'm sure that the wipe has gone through. So I will see you there.